uh, before he got to work on some pretty like classic tracks with Jerome Robbins, but it, it, it was just like not getting enough traction. And, yeah. and, and around that time, there was a weird period where techno and tech house became a little stale. Yeah. And, um, that's where deep house started really becoming huge yeah. globally. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I went to Amsterdam. I, I got inspired at EDE. And I was like, yo, we need to get on this train right now. This is dope. There's melodies in the music. There's mm-hmm. feelings. There's like, it just, it, before it was very like <laughs> robotic music, yeah. zero feelings, just two yeah. notes, drums, percussion, that's it. And I'm yeah. like, like, boring. This is then, and then instead of making deep house or more deep house influenced stuff, and it just, mm-hmm. I, I mean, look, I, I used to make hip hop beats where there's melodies and feelings involved. So I, I, I'm, I was always better at that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's, that's a mature move of you because I think a lot of people, I've interviewed a lot of people that have had one, two or three projects, right? And sometimes they're going really well. I've interviewed a lot of house DJs. I know you know Cloverdale, right? Yeah. Cloverdale was a dubstep producer and was killing it doing really really well but his heart wasn't in it and it was hard for him to say i could keep following this dream and you know pursuing it it's going great right now but where do i want to be five years from now i want to be making the music that really makes an impact not only on others but most importantly myself and yeah sounds like you were like i have to do that as well oh for sure for sure for sure same with the broken future guys i think they were into more bassy stuff as well yeah and then they're like, well, this is not what, what we really want to do. I'm not going to speak for them, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very similar situation as well. For sure. Um, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I love the, the underground tech house minimal stuff too. Like time and a place for everything. But yeah, I wanted Return of the Jada to be a more deep sounding project. Now, since then, it's, it's, it's evolved into different things. But yeah, but that, that was the start of it for sure. What's yeah. the story behind the name Return of the Jaded? So Return of the Jaded, there's three of us originally. I don't know mm-hmm. if I told you this before. I there's three that. guys. And, and, and I think we just needed something. Some, You know, you, you can name something like tree or or pink base or something. But, but we needed the name that's that's going to stick. It's easy to remember. Yeah. Um, and we were jaded. So Return of the Jedi. Mm. For Jedi jaded, yes, and boom, there you go. Because people were like, "Oh yeah, Return of the Jedi or jaded." I heard that before, and then it just sticks with you. It I does, think. dude. <laughs> and and abbreviated to RLTJ is like sick. Like I have it all over my notes here. I'm like RLTJ, yeah, fuck yeah, Return of the Jaded. It just sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. It looks good. It sounds good. It feels good to say. It's a great name. 